thank you, Arthur, for taking a few minutes out of your precious time and having this little interview with mm -hmm. us. Uh, first of all, would you give us a quick uh, overview? What is that you do? What does your company do? And how do uh, you uh, present it, uh, yourself at this conference? Uh, well, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. So the company uh, which I founded and I lead is called General Quantitative. And as the name suggests, it's a quantitative investment management company. Although the name says general, we actually do have a fairly narrow uh, specialization, which is we try to focus on risk-driven investment strategies, which means that in particular, we try to not so much uh, focus on trying to forecast where the market is going up or down, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's next day or next month or next year, but trying to basically understand what the risk conditions in the markets are and position whatever strategy that we are running appropriately for those risk conditions. It's a very particular way of uh, running money. It's, uh, it's a way of um, basically uh, converting defense into offense, meaning mm -hmm. risk management, everybody does risk management, whether yes. quants or non-quants. Um, but this is a way of converting the risk information into a source of alpha. And um, we do have a fund that mm -hmm. does that. It uh, navigates this uh, so-called risk on risk off cycles. Mm -hmm. um, has been working okay as, as was designed, uh, as most quants do. We start with long back tests and then we make it live and so on. And the most important thing is that the life experience matches with the backtest expectations, and that's that means that the model is within its uh, range of applicability. Let's put it this way. Sounds very uh, very complicated. Uh, right. Let me ask you this: Are quants always a black box, or can quants explain to investors uh, how their strategies work in a way investors can understand? So, well, you tell me. I just explained you my strategy. Was it understandable? That if, if uh, basically um, there are some strategies where it has to be black box. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Most high frequency strategies um, try to be very, it's not even a question of that being very fast, but it, uh, it needs to be essentially very technically driven and look at lots of lots of variables and try to do uh, lots of quick calculations and so on. Having said it, if you distill it all down, if at the end of the day somebody tells you, well, the only reason it works well, despite all of this complex mathematics, is that we are five milliseconds faster than the next guy, you know why it works. Right. Right. So, so, I, so sometimes it's a black box, sometimes that black box is just a cover for something much simpler that's mm -hmm. happening, right? So that's an example. Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes it's not a black box, like our model, it's not a black box. Whenever I meet with investors, I can tell them quite a lot about how the model works, why it works, and so on. But actually understanding why yes. that is actually true, mm -hmm. it takes a lot more uh, sort of digging deeper and, and research. So my preference, personally, mm -hmm. is to work on models and strategies that are mm -hmm. simple to explain, but have more complicated reasons why they work, yes. as opposed to the other way around. Other way around. But I also, my understanding is that you have to move pretty fast in all this. Uh... Us? No. No, not no. really. No, not, not, in this, not in the strategies which we run. Um, that is, uh, by the way, it's a choice and a design. It's more of a product question. Yeah. So this is actually one thing that quants are very different from, I don't know, discretionary managers, mm -hmm. is quants are more like engineers, mm -hmm. not only scientists, but more even engineers, meaning you have a machine, it's your choice, What do you, you have an engine, it's your choice what kind of car you build. You can build a you know, two-seater fast car or you can build a large truck with Fair it. Enough. So it's a product design question. So in our particular case, our product design is such that we try to navigate 
these risk on risk off cycles which happen in the economy like once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. because of that, we don't have to trade fast. In fact, it's detrimental for us to trade fast because then you would be reacting to a lot of noise. A lot of noise, yeah. Right? Flip side of that, if, if it was our intention to trade fast and, and navigate the daily ups and downs and so on, then we would need to trade fast. Mm -hmm. that it's just a choice of what you are trying to deliver to the uh, investors. And uh, the second question I have for you, what should the investor be paying for in your case? What is the skill in a quant manager that an investor should be paying for? Well, that's a good question. And actually, it's a, I, I don't believe it's a well understood question in general. Um, because, especially in hedge fund community, because, you know, well, somebody pays 2 and 20, somebody pays 1 and 10, somebody pays nothing and 50 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the, like, what is it that you are paying for, right? And in some cases, it's special sauce of some sort. And that special sauce, in case of quants, could be technology, mm -hmm. could be speed, could be some special formula, could be some machine learning, could be whatever it is. Right, but um, that to me is actually secondary question as to more of a what exactly I think I am bringing to table. And to my view, uh, not just for what we are doing, but generally quants, they have four basic skills, which uh, some possess some skills more, some mm. others possess other skills more. And those are forecasting skill, meaning like I can actually predict what's going to happen. Now that's Is it hard. Because of your true, no, 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 true gut or no, 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 not gut. No, no, no. That's that's the discretionary people no. who do that. For quants, it means I have a model who can actually predict, right? I have I have statistical evidence that I can predict, and so on and so forth, right? That's very hard to come by. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are some who who have that forecasting capability. Uh, but by and large, it's actually the least available skill. And if there is that skill, you should pay a lot for it in whichever fee structure, but it's, it's right. a very valuable skill. The second skill, which is um, actually more of a technical skill, it's an execution. Because suppose I can forecast, but if I cannot execute and yes. extract money from my forecast, there's nothing. Right. So and sometimes it's an interchange, you know, you can have a weaker forecasting ability, but a better execution ability mm -hmm. and you can make more for your investors yeah. versus vice versa. So execution ability is very, very important. Having said it, it's much more commoditized because all the banks do execution for you, mm -hmm. all the there is technology companies and so on and so forth. So basically, that's a valuable skill, but much more commoditized. It's easy to buy. Right. OK. So, but if Given the choice, if you would have to bring one skill forward, so, which skill would that be? On your so th there are two more, mm. right? So the third one is risk management skill, mm -hmm. which is my choice for us, not because it's the best skill, but because that's what I know what to do, mm -hmm. because that's based on my 20 some years on Wall Street. That's what I have learned across multiple dimensions of the business. So that's my know-how. That's what I bring. Excellent. Okay. And, and then the fourth one is structuring and product design, which is another thing which is not very common among quants or anybody else, mm -hmm. which is to know what you are doing, how it should be packaged to be a good product for your investor. You know, certain things mm -hmm. are good as, you know, hedge funds, certain things are good as mutual funds, certain things are good as ETFs, certain things are good as managed accounts and whatever, whatever. So it's not necessarily, so you have to understand it from the investor's perspective to understand what's the best value, what, how, what kind of car you have to design given the engine that you have in order for the investors to be happy with it. that would determine the uh, priority which the investor picks. Right, right. right. So for us, for general quantitative, it's the latter two skills that we focus on. It's mm -hmm. the risk management, which we drive as far as it is a source of alpha, and it's the product design, which is we understand what we think we understand what investors really need, mm -hmm. and we know how to package it that way. And you don't need to convince them. <laughs> 
uh, eventually performance convinces them and risk management convinces them. Well, I, I mean, I hope, yeah. right? <laughs> but but I, I'm not gonna tell investors that I know how to forecast the markets, mm -hmm. even if I think I can, but I won't, right? And execution is not very relevant for us because by design, we, we don't need to be the first one to execute. Excellent. Thank, Thank you so you much, very much for sharing your thoughts. Thank you.